Diamond Veil. Shattered Memories. By Eric Hua. Chapter 13. The Amazonians. Break Free. Dante, Liam and Saman were taken to an area away from where Myla was being led. When they arrived, the soldiers all lined up and stood for attention as they put Myla at the center of the room. The warriors chanted in unison before putting their weapons aside. In front of the room was someone with an empowering aura, wearing battle armor sitting on the throne. It was the queen of the Amazonians. One of the leaders of the Amazonians stepped up and bowed to the queen. She explained that they found Myla and a group of her friends out in the forest. However, since Myla was a woman, they were wondering how the queen wanted to proceed with her. The queen looked at Myla from her throne and deemed her unworthy. She commanded the leader to throw Myla away in the prison with her friends. However, one of the warriors stood out of line and asked the queen to reconsider. The warrior's name was Arya and the queen was not fond of her actions. She warned Arya that her words could be viewed as treason but Arya explained that she only had her people's best interest at heart. Arya explained that many of their sisters in arm have been lost due to a constant struggle against the enemy forces. She saw Myla as a capable fighter who could help them in their plight. The queen would not listen to Arya. She was ready to throw her away in the prison along with Myla until one of their soldiers interrupted with an urgent report. Her message was that their forces on the front line were under heavy assault and they needed reinforcements immediately. The commander took charge of the situation and told the forces to rally to her. They were going to support their soldiers on the front line, but before the commander left, she told Arya that their new guest was now her responsibility. The commander and her forces left, while Arya took Myla into the barracks to prepare for battle, leaving the queen alone. When they arrived in the barracks, Arya went through the assortment of weapons to find one for Myla. While she was doing so, Myla thanked Arya for saving her against the Queen's wrath. Arya smiled and then gave Myla a new pair of footwear to help improve her speed and kicking ability. As Myla put them on, she asked what would happen to her friends. To which, Arya explained that if she helped them successfully defeat the enemy, they would most likely be freed. Away from all the fighting, the Queen retreated to her room. Her head was aching and she was flustered by everything that had happened. She sat down at her desk, grabbed the feather pen and began writing a note. When the note was finished, she signed it off and rolled it up. She called for one of her hawks who had a harness to carry a message. She gave the bird specific instructions to whom the message was to be delivered. Hidden in an alleyway in Diamond Vale, Arnov woke up and remembered that someone captured him the other day. He was surprised to find out he wasn't tied up and then he heard Willihem's voice. Willyham told Arnov that it was Harshitha who had brought him here and currently she was about to break the intruder out of prison. Inside the prison, Devon was securely watched by one of the enforcers. The prisoner was lying on his back until he felt the need to speak. He told the guard he wanted a snack as he would need to keep his energy up in order to escape today. The guard laughed at the ridiculous comment and then he felt a tap on his shoulder. He had his guard up until he turned around and saw Harshitha. The guard let out a sigh of relief, but that was also when Harshitha used an ice spell to freeze the man in his place. She took the keys and walked up to the cell that contained Devon. She looked strictly at his eyes and threatening that if he did anything suspicious, she would show him no mercy. Devon laughingly agreed as he just wanted to escape the prison after being trapped there for so long. Back on the surface, Willyham and Arnov had their hands full as some enforcers had overheard their loud conversation. Arnov was more than capable of handling himself, but Willyham was still new to combat. While Arnov was surrounded by a squad of enforcers, he heard Willyham being carried away. With Willyham getting further away and Arnov growing fatigued, it seemed there was only one option left. Arnov was about to pull out his geode stone, but before he could do so Devon appeared between the two enforcers and took them out instantly. Devon grabbed Willyham and pulled him to safety. A group of enforcers began charging at Arnov, but a firewall appeared before them. Arnov charged forward with his shield and bashed all the enforcers aside. Together, they dealt with all the enforcers in the area. As Arnov was putting his weapons away, he could see Harshitha moving in his direction. 
she smacked him on the head and scolded him and Willihan that they had only one job, to stay quiet. As Harshitha continued yelling, there was another army of enforcers heading their way. Without any options for escaping, they had to head in the one place none of them wanted to go back to, the prison. The door was shut tight and Devon busted the lock so the enemies couldn't enter even with their keys. They were going to need another strategy to get in and the captain of the enforcers happened to be there. He commanded his forces to grab canisters of gasoline and to spread it around the prison. Inside the prison, Harshitha, Arnoff and Willihan were trying to think of a way to escape. Unfortunately, they all just began arguing again. It took a while before Willyham began smelling something funny in the air. Not only was there a gaseous smell, but they were all starting to sweat from their foreheads. They also smelt smoke that was growing stronger by the second. At that point, Arnov realized that they needed to find an escape immediately. However, Willyham, Arnov, and Hashitha never found a way out. From the outside, the captain held the explosive agent in his hand. He threw it from a distance and when it came in contact with the flames, the whole prison exploded. He told one of his subordinates to let Headmaster Hollis know that he had for less problems to worry about.